Hey everyone, Leanne here from Kingdom Bloggers. So today we're going to talk about back end SEO. Now, this is a term I totally made up. I don't think you'll find this exact terminology anywhere in like regular blogging stuff, but it's a very good descriptor of taking care of the SEO on the back end of your site before you start even worrying about blog posts. Blog post SEO is, is a part of SEO, but before we start making content, we need something to identify what our site is. I kind of relate this to getting your number in the phone book back when we actually had phone books, right? There's information you'd fill out an information sheet and send it to or submit it to the phone company. And then when the new phone book was published, your name would be listed there or your business or whatever. And so that is basically kind of what point of backend SEO is. It's giving Google enough information about your site so that it can adequately and properly index it and give the right information about it. Um, basically, when, and when you say, hey, my site is Kingdom Bloggers, just go Google Kingdom Bloggers and you type in Kingdom Bloggers or someone types that in. The goal is that your website is the first thing that comes up in those search results. But also eventually, if you've ever noticed, you'll have like a main one and I'll show you what that looks like here in a minute. And then under it, there's like, contact and this and that. And there's like this little menu of sorts under it. And then below that entry might be your Pinterest account, your social media. Um, like for me, my course Academy shows up. And so that is the goal of this, but then it also gives it a little more information about what, like if someone sees it in the search results, a little snippet to give them a real quick glance inside of what they're going to find. And so there's several things that we're going to do. And so I'm going to walk you through those today. If you happen to have the workbook, the SEO workbook, there is actually a worksheet to help you. It's like a checklist to make sure you don't forget any of this stuff and make sure you have all of the different tasks set. Okay. So let's hop over here. Um, I'm actually going to show you in one of my sites here, pray, it's my pray for everything site. So one of the first things you want to make sure we're going to go here to our settings and go to the general tab. Okay. So in here, you want to make sure you have your site title, the name of your site. And then if you have a tagline that sums up the point of it. So for this one, it's prayer resources to improve your prayer life. Keep it short, sweet, right? And then you want to make sure here you have the full URL for your site. Without the, I know some people, when I say, what's the site, which the URL to your site, they'll put their domain.com slash blog. The blog is a page, right? Uh, maybe a category or something built into your theme, but your domain, your website is just the dot whatever. Okay. And make sure it has an S on it right here. And both of these should be the same. I don't know of any situations where they'd be different. And then you have your email and just some other stuff. Adjust the time to... Um, this here should be default to this. If you're just setting your blog up, most of this will be defaulted, but you may want to make sure that you're in the right time zone for your blog. Like your computer may have a time zone set, but you want to make sure that it's set on here as well. And then hit save changes. Okay. So now we're going to hop over to, now I use rank math. Some of you may use Yoast. You may ask what's the difference, which is better. For SEO, SEO meaning optimizing your content so it's get, it gets found on Google, it doesn't matter. The plugin is not what gets your content ranked. You knowing how to write it and writing it well is what gets it to rank. But these tools can be helpful in inserting things into the tags, into the back end of your site um, to help it more properly be reflected in the search results. So my videos are going to show where to do it in rank math. Rank math has some other features that I like, such as the built-in um, ability to redirect. Like if you delete a post, uh, if you don't, if you just delete it, then when the crawlers come, they're going to see broken links. They're going to see 404, page not found, things like that. If you use the free version of Yoast, you have to also install a redirection plugin. And I'm all about as many as few plugins as possible, Rank Math has it built in. And that's one of the reasons I like it better than Yoast. I actually have, I'll, I'll link my why I prefer one over the other. I have a tutorial about that. I'll link that down in the, the notes for this video. Um, okay, so we're gonna hop over here to Rank Math. 
Okay. Now, when you first install it, you want to do the advanced wizard because that's going to open up some other features that you won't have if you just go through the basic one. Now, this is the free version. Please do not pay for either Yoast or Rank Math's paid version. All you need is free. So once you go through it all, all of these, you'll actually part of the wizard, the setup wizard takes you through each of these. Um, so you shouldn't have to adjust anything here. So we're going to come down here to the titles and meta tab. So the things that we're going to edit or make sure they're good are mainly right now, we're going to focus on your homepage. So when that homepage comes up in search results, and I'll show you here. Let's see if mine is going to come up. <laughs> so here it is right here. My site's still fairly new. And so it hasn't quite come up as the first thing because I'm competing with other Bible and prayer sites. But you see here, pray for everything, pray resources for all occasions, right? That's the title. And then here it's it explains, this is the goal. You want this to be a snippet that describes in less than one and a half lines, like they can capture the essence of what they're going to find on this site. Place to find prayers to pray over all areas of your life and prayer resources to help you become a, a powerful prayer warrior. Sums it up pretty well, right? So whatever yours is, and we're going to talk about this uh, in the course, if you're in the course, but you need to give what I call a two sentence or one sentence, but two line elevator speech of description, I guess. If I say, what's your site about? this is what it's about, but simple. It's not a paragraph, right? A really quick, and you can visualize that here by this is all that shows up is up to, actually it's less than two lines of content. And so you need to be able to say the important stuff about what the, the site is about in those two lines, okay? This is called your meta description. And if you're working through the workbook, there's a worksheet for that. Okay, so... Where you enter this information may vary depending on the theme that you're using. If you're using, um, like I use Astro Pro, then chances are you have a page. So I'm going to come over here to pages real quick. Some themes have it built in and there's already a page that is a, like in your pages. It, it says home page. Um, my, this one does not. Let me go to my kingdom one here. Log. On my Kingdom Bloggers, because I had converted it from another theme, a Restore 316, and so it had a built-in page assigned as the home page, right? And so you see it here, it says front page. So when you go here, so in Rank Math again, we're gonna we're on the titles and meta, or global meta is what it says here, but over here on the left, it says titles and meta. You're gonna scroll down here to home page, and you should be able to put everything in here. Now, if you have a theme installed that has a, 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 a dedicated page already like scripted into the code of the theme, then you'll get a little thing here that says edit the details of this page and it'll link you to that page, which will be in pages. And that's what you see here on mine. Let me show you how it looks here. Where did rank math go? There you go. Tight. Oops this one so if I go to home page see this is what my home page so I'm clicking on the home page tab in titles and meta so over here home page tab in titles and meta this is what it looks like on my site this is what it looks like on my kingdom site and so you'll see here it says edit page so this takes me to the dedicated page that was scripted into my theme so that I can edit it there and if we open that up, it actually looks like, like a blog post, like if you open it up. And because I custom built this, I don't have a standard homepage, it's a static homepage that I built. And so the SEO stuff will be done here. But let's hop over to this one first. So if you're going to do it here in the Rank Math, uh, the Rank Math plugin, not the individual page, you're going to put in, so again, we are titles and meta homepage. Here's where you're going to put that. Pray for every. This is how you want it to look when it shows up in search results. That meta description that we talked about right here, the homepage meta description. Again, 
Keep it short, keep it simple. Anything over two lines is going to get cut off. So you need to, and it should start with your name. Pray for everything is a place for, to find, where, whatever. And when I say your name, I mean, if your blog's name is your name, then yes. If it's a regular name, like how mine is pray for everything, kingdom bloggers, whatever. You want to start it with the name of your blog. This is a part of getting your number in the phone book, okay? So pray for everything is a place to find whatever. It's a place for you. It may be a place for women to grow stronger in their knowledge of the Bible through Bible studies, things like that. Get those key words in there that sum up the essence of what your ministry is about. Down here, if you want it to say something different for Facebook, um, I don't see why you would do that, but there's an option here. So I just copy the same thing in the Facebook. So this is when you share the link to your homepage, your blog, the, the yourblog.com. This is what will show up in that thumbnail that, that comes up when you share the link. And then the image that you want to show up when you share the link to your home page, this is what this is for. Home page thumbnail for Facebook. This also will work on Twitter. So uh, it, it extracts the thumbnail. If you don't put something in here, what happens is Google will just extract, or I'm sorry, Facebook will extract the last image that was added. Like if you have a home feed, whatever the image at the top of the feed is, that's what it'll show. So like every time you show or share the link to your homepage, it may be a different picture and maybe it has, you know, words on it. It's just whatever. So put an image here. This should not have any text on it at all. Don't put the name of your blog on it because the name is going to be right above it. And what I mean by that is, so if I do, This is for kingdom bloggers. We right here we were looking at the pray site, but for kingdom bloggers, this is the image I have. It's Bible study tips. So it's a picture of a woman who appears to be studying the Bible and drinking coffee. Do not put do not put words on this picture because the title is right below it. So it would be overkill. And so just find a nice lifestyle image from Canva or if you have deposit photos or one of those that kind of embodies the essence of what your site is about. If it's about Bible study, if it's parenting, then maybe you should show parents with kids or something, right? So this will be the thumbnail that represents your homepage anytime you share it on Facebook or Twitter. Now, each individual blog post will also have a featured image that should sum up like that piece of content. But for your homepage, you want to assign one. So if you are using, if if you're in this mode where you, where you do it right here in Rank Math, this is where you do it on home page and then you upload that image and it gives you the dimensions 1200 by 630 that's basically your blog banner you can use the blog banner that's what i've always used and that's it now if you are like mine where you have a custom page built then you're going to go into that page and you're going to go into your again i'm in rank math but in yoast it'll it'll look different but it's the same concept so you click over into the Yoast or Rank Math blog for me, it's here. So in Rank Math, I'm gonna do, you have edit snippet. So you're gonna open that up. This is where you put the title, right? Kingdom Bloggers, Simple Bible Study Tips. This is where you put your meta description. Again, this is a page or post, and this is how you will do it when you get to doing regular blog posts, but this is for your home page. It needs to sum up everything. You don't have a permalink because it's just your home page, right? Okay, close this. And then the image that's going to be associated. So over here, we put it right there. But if you're in, in this way, if you're in a custom design page, you're going to go to the editor here and you'll set the featured image. Now I have mine set in down here at the bottom, I think. You can set it here as well. Um, so this is when it, my social sharing plugin enables me to do it here. But if you don't have that, then you would put it here. You could do both, put the same image in both places if you want to make sure it gets that. Um, but you can also, like I use the Grow uh, Share, Grow by Media Vine social plugin. And so this is my social media share for this. You could also put a Pinterest image in here if you wanted. Okay. 
okay, so that is your homepage, right? Now, for the rest of this stuff, some things that we're going to do on this particular uh, um, titles in meta, we want to come down here to tags. We're going to click on tags. We are going to make this no index. If you decide to use tags to, to sort of organize your content, then we want to make them no index. And we'll talk about tags a little later. So I'm not going to dive into it in this video. Um, but tags should be used sparingly. Every tag you create creates a, a new URL. It'll be yourblog.com slash tag slash whatever it is. And so this is additional pages that Google has to index. And so tags are for taxonomy purposes. So it's, it's organization. It's like sub organization. And eventually you may want them like for my content, I have a lot of stuff, right? And so I have a category for Bible study. And in that I have probably maybe eight to 10 posts that are a part of my parable series. So each of those is given a tag of parables. That way I can find it in my my dashboard, I can just write, type in parables and they'll all come up. But if I wanted to send a link to someone, here's all my parables content, I could just sing, send them the link of myblog.com slash tag slash parables. And then they would have a feed of all the posts that were given that tag, okay? But we don't wanna create the extra work for the crawler. So what we're gonna do here, you're gonna click on tags and Right here where it says tag archive robots, by default indexed is going to be checked and probably all the rest. So you're going to click on no index. And that's the only one that you want to have checked in this section. All right. And I think that's the only thing in here. Yeah. So that's it. No index your tags. And then hit save. And you're good with that. Do not no index your categories. Leave your categories as they are which should not have that no index little column of things, right? All right, now moving on. So we've no indexed our tags. We've SEO'd the homepage. Now we wanna SEO, backend SEO, our category archives, all right? So what does that look like? So over here uh, on the left side, we're gonna go to posts and you're gonna, oops, you're gonna click on categories. And then your categories are going to come up. So remember, your categories are part of your blog structure. So if you're watching this and you're just getting started with this and you're still trying to figure out what your categories are, then don't do this just yet because um, this is like, this is a part of putting you in the phone book and letting Google know what's inside, okay? But once you do get your blog structure figured out what your main categories are going to be, you're going to create the category, right? Name, the slug should just be what it is. So here, prayer resources is my category. Prayer dash resources is the slug. And then just a, a description. So in this right here, collection of prayer resources, such as prayer journals, prayer bowls, prayer sheets, and more. Boom. Right? And then I have a prayers category and a praying category. Okay? So if you had Bible study, if you had productivity or organization, just, just a simple description of what that category is about. Use some really good keywords that are associated with it. Boom. Now your category backend SEO is complete. So do that for all your categories, right? Now you will have a default category called uncategorized. You, as far as I know, you can't get rid of this category. So like these, I can click the X or the tick box and then I can bulk action delete. This is a placeholder that comes with your themes. Do not ever assign any blog post to the category of uncategorized. If you post a piece of content, it needs to fall into one of your categories, okay? So again, this here, this count, every time you assign this a post to a category, it'll add to the count here. So it should always be zero for your uncategorized. Okay, so we've done homepage, we've done our categories, we know indexed our tags. Some other things you're gonna wanna do are our backend SEO, some of your admin pages. And so admin pages are, if you have a start here page, if you have a contact page, I personally don't have a contact page. My contact is built into my start here page or my about page. Um, 
but you may have like your legal pages, you have things like that. So your start here or about page, you're going to go to that page just like I did on Kingdom. You will, let's see, leave. We'll go over here. Pages. Let me see. Do I have an about? So you'll find it in your pages. You'll open it up. In, oh, the one thing I forgot about the homepage, if you have a box in your Yoast or Rank Math, this is what's the focus keyword for this page, which when we get to blog posts, of course, we'll dive into that. But for your homepage and for your about page or your start here, it's going to be your blog name. Just like your meta description starts with your blog name, the focus key phrase for the page is your blog name. So Kingdom Bloggers, pray for everything. So whatever your site name is, that is what you'll put as the focus key phrase for your homepage and your about page. This is again, helping establish that your blog's name needs to be in the phone book and this is a part of getting it in there, okay? So now for these other pages, um, you have like your affiliate disclaimers, your privacy policies, all your legal pages. If you have a contact page or a work with me page, these are all the other pages. There are some that we want them to be indexed. So if someone was looking for it, like your start here page or your about page, but many of your admin pages do not need to be indexed, okay? Your legal page, nobody's looking, nobody's Googling. Now, when they're on your site, they may look for it, but nobody's Googling Kingdom Bloggers legal page, <laughs> Kingdom Bloggers privacy policy, right? Nobody Googles that stuff. And so you don't need those URLs to be indexed or added to your SEO value. Every piece of content that is published and is fully indexable, like Google, so if you had like a hundred published pages, Google looks at those hundred and says, okay, 40 of them are good and have SEO value and I can figure out what they're about, but these other ones really have no value. But that's like 60% of your content. And so you want to have as few pages as possible that have no value. Actually, you really don't want any, but you do. You have your privacy, your legals, and all those things. So the way to keep them out of Google's eyes is to make them no index. And so let me go to, I can do my affiliate hub here. So the page is there. If you share the link to it, then anybody who has the link can access it. If you put the link on your site, it's accessible but Google is not using it as a grading factor. So again, you'll go to the page, you'll come over here to your Yoast or Rank Math section, whichever it is. You're gonna, so by default, it's on general tab here. If you click on this one, I mean, honestly, I think this looks like a, a present, like a little gift box, but click on that. If you're in Yoast, um, I think it's called the advanced tab. And so in here, the default would be that no indexed, is, I'm sorry, the index, this first block is checked by default. So you're gonna uncheck that one and then check all of the rest of these, okay? And then hit save. Now, and you saw that on my view here, uh, where'd it go? So here it's NA, no index. In other words, the crawlers don't access this one, you're good to go. So any pages that you have that you like seriously have no SEO value, you want to do this to them. And again, these are all your legal, legal pages, any administrative pages. That was my affiliate hub for affiliates of my coloring books and stuff to help them find information. Um, maybe your, I would leave your contact page. If you do a contact page, leave it indexable. So it'll show up in the drop down. Um, but any of those other kind of pages. And if you're not sure what that is, just hop over to my Facebook group and ask. Okay. All right, so we've done homepage, we've done category archives, we've no indexed our tags, and we have no indexed um, non-SEO admin content, okay? So we can come back over here to the rank math, and we're just gonna kind of go through some of these. We have the general settings. Um, you really aren't gonna mess with much of these. By default, they should be, the default setting for them should be fine. Webmaster tools. So once you get everything in order, all your back end SEO is done, and you're like, this is my site structure, this is what my categories are going to be, everything's good to go. 
At that point, you're going to create a sitemap and you're going to submit it to Google Search Console and other areas for indexing. I'm not going to do that in this video. I do have another video that shows you how to do that, but your webmaster tools is one way to do it. I would not do your Google Search Console through webmaster tools, but for Bing and these other ones um, and Pinterest as well, I wouldn't do Pinterest here. Put that in your uh, header code, which there's another video that shows you how to do that. Uh, let's see. Okay. Titles of meta sitemap settings. This is where you would find your sitemap. This is your sitemap right here. Um, and then that's pretty much it. Redirections, like I said, um, which isn't part of backend SEO, but as you move forward, if you're a blogger has been doing this for a while and you have to delete content, you want to do something with that link. Cause once you delete it now, it's going to have a 404 error that's saying page not found. You don't want that. So anytime you delete content, do a redirection for that URL that you deleted. And you come right here to redirection, create it right here in Rank Math. If you're using Yoast, you actually need a redirection plugin. Again, that's another reason I like Rank Math. So anyway, um, I know this was kind of a lot. Um, so if you have any questions at all, you're not quite sure, um, just hop over to my Facebook group or, you know, ask me a question right here in the comments. Um, and I will help kind of direct you again, like, where a lot of this information is put is dependent upon the theme that you have. And also if you're using Yoast, it's going to look slightly different than what you were seeing on my videos. Um, so anyway, I hope this was helpful, but this isn't a, a very crucial part of beginning to build credibility, authority, and just establishing that you are a site and getting your number in the phone book, so to speak. It's not technically your number, it's your web address. And the create the name that your website is and then the description so that when people find it, they know everything that displays in that little snippet is what you want to tell people about it. Okay. All right, guys, that's all for this video. Um, as always like this video, follow us here at Kingdom Bloggers and I will see you all in the next lesson. Bye-bye.